Hi, my name is Matt McClymans. I'm a public cloud consultant engineer with Palo Alto Networks. Today we're going to walk through how to secure an Azure network with the VM series firewall. This is best suited for anyone who is new to Azure networking or wants to have a better understanding of how the VM series can benefit their organization. So to start off, this is the Palo Alto Networks offering to secure public cloud environments. First, we can secure inline traffic for our cloud networks by leveraging the VM series. Again, this is where we're really going to be focusing our time today. Next, we have Traps, which provides advanced endpoint protection for our cloud host. And lastly, we have Redlock that can deliver continuous security and compliance for our public cloud PaaS services. So here is what we see as the most common use cases for the VM series in the cloud. First, we have hybrid. The VM series can secure traffic between your on-premise environment and your cloud networks. We then have segmentation, where the VM series can secure traffic moving laterally within your cloud environments. Third, we have internet gateway, so we can protect public-facing applications such as a web server with the VM series. And lastly, the VM series can extend its uh, prevention capabilities to remote users and mobile devices by leveraging Global Protect. Today we're going to be focusing purely on segmentation and internet gateway. Hybrid and remote access are not covered. So here's what we'll be deploying today. Uh, we're going to use an ARM template to create all of our Azure resources and also do some baseline configurations on the VM series. The reason for using the template is it just makes it easy to spin up the environment quickly. We'll walk through all of the configurations and components so you'll have an understanding of what their, what their part is in this deployment. So first thing that the template makes is a virtual network. And this virtual network has five subnets. Our first subnet will be a web subnet. It's going to contain a Linux server that's running Apache. Its respective database server is going to be running in its own DB subnet. And then we have the VM series which has three interfaces, each of which reside in dedicated subnets. We have our management NIC, which is used strictly for accessing the VM series GUI or terminal console. And then we have our two data plane interfaces. First, the untrust, which acts as our internet gateway to our backend web applications. And then we have our trust interface, which acts as our segmentation gateway between our web and DB subnets as well. The other component that's applied here are Azure route tables, and Azure route tables are assigned to subnets within a VNet. And these route tables have something that Azure calls user-defined routes, or UDRs. And UDRs give us the flexibility to take a subnet's traffic and send it to a destination. In this particular deployment, we will be assigning a route table to the web subnet and a route table to our DB subnet. And they each will have a default route that will send their internet traffic to the trust interface of the firewall. This will allow us to secure their egressing internet traffic through, this, through the VM series. The second route that each of these have is to control traffic traversing between these two subnets, or east to west within the environment, to the trust interface of the VM series. So here is our link to deploy the template. Um, all we have to do is just click this and it'll bring us to our GitHub page. Up here on the top there's a written step-by-step -step guide if you want to read along instead. And so if we scroll down to the bottom here, just got to click this Deploy to Azure button. It'll take us into our Azure console. So now that we're in here, we can enter in some parameters. Um, I would recommend for the first parameter, after you select your subscription, for your resource group, create a new one. Um, reason being, it's going to enable you to clean up the environment uh, much faster when we're done. So I will call this two tier demo RG. I'm going to just stick with East US for the region. The storage account is used for the VM's OS disk. Uh, today, Azure has managed disks, so if you wanted to use those as well, you can modify the template and use those. Um, for the, so for the storage account name, I'm just going to put in my, my last name. The template automatically appends a string to the end of it because they do have to be unique. Um, also, no crazy characters in the names, no spaces on the storage account. So the firewall DNS name is 
going to be assigned to the public IP on the management interface. So this can be any DNS name. I'm just going to stick with the defaults. Again, there's a random string tied to these, so they're globally unique. Firewall VM name, just stick with the default. Same with the VM size. And then there's the firewall SKU. If you have a license, you can use bring your own license. And after the firewall boots up, you can apply the license to the VM. Um, if you don't have one, the bundles or pay as you go. These each have different offerings inside of each. I'm going to just select bundle two for this. And for your gateway login, you can select, or you can enter in your public IP for from where you're coming from. So the public IP on the management interface and the public IP on our untrust interface can be locked down by an Azure Network Security Group to only allow traffic from your IP. I'm going to leave it for everything for now. All we have to do is click Agree and click Purchase. So if we click this bell icon up in the top, we can actually click deployment in progress here. And if we click refresh, we'll start to see resources coming in and being created. So I'm going to pause the video here and wait for this deployment to complete, and we'll join back. So welcome back. Our template's finished running. It shouldn't take more than 15 minutes or so for it to finish. So if we wanted to look at everything that was deployed, if we go to resource groups, click the resource group we defined in the template, and in this overview section, we can see all of the resources that are that now exist. So we have our interfaces for our VMs. We have our public IPs for our management and untrust interfaces. We have a route table for our database and our web subnets. Storage account for the VM's uh, disk. Our three virtual machines and a VNet. So if we look at the VNet, we can see from this overview tab all of the interfaces that belong to this virtual network. If we go into subnets, we can see the individual subnets. And now on the route tables, we can take a look at what's how this is configured. So this web to firewall route table is assigned to our web subnet, and we have two user-defined routes. The first user-defined route sends all of its default traffic to the trust interface of the firewall. So when anything in the web subnet wants to go out to the internet, for example, it's going to go take this default route. When web wants to talk to the database subnet, which is this dot four range, it's going to also go to the trust interface of the firewall. So you might be asking why is the second route necessary? And the reason is, is because of the way Azure's default routing works for a virtual network. So by default, there are two predefined behaviors. The first is whenever a public IP is attached to a, a VM or to an interface in a, in a subnet, that VM can reach out to the internet. So that's why we place this user-defined route in to override that behavior to automatically send that traffic to the inside or trust interface of the firewall. The second predefined behavior is if you have subnets in a VNet and you have VMs in these subnets, they will be able to talk to each other regardless. Um, so by putting the second user-defined route in, we are overriding that predefined behavior for east to west traffic. So this allows us to inspect traffic going from DB or coming from web to DB. Likewise, on our DB to firewall route table, we have the same default route and we have traffic for when web or when DB wants to go to web, to send it to the trust interface of the firewall. And this is just assigned to the DB subnet. So if we go back to deployments, click Microsoft Template, click Outputs. I already typed in and up over here, but click Copy. This is our URL for accessing the management of the firewall. And the default username and password, it's inside of the GitHub guide, but it's Palo Alto, then P-A-L-O-0, A-L-T-O-0, at one, two, three.
So this will bring us into the GUI. And on this dashboard page, we can see some interesting information. Let me just close out of the welcome message. So some general information, some system logs. So if we wanted to start from our network, we can see that we have two interfaces created. We have our untrust and trust. If you click these, you can actually see the IP that we're receiving from Azure. Our virtual router. We have three routes that are pre-configured for us. We have an outbound route or a default route that sends traffic to Ethernet 1.1, which is our untrust interface. And its next hop is 10.5.1.1. And the reason why it's dot one one and not the actual interface of the firewall is because in a Azure subnet the default gateway is always the first available IP so if the untrust subnet CIDR is or prefix is zero is one dot zero slash twenty four the default gateway is going to be one dot one likewise for the trust subnets we will send it to the trust subnets default gateway of ten five two one On our security policies, we have a number of policies here. We're allowing all pings, and you can see, if you scroll over to the right, see the applications that we're allowing ping and SSH. We're allowing app git to run on our uh, allow all outbound. And what we can demonstrate is really the visibility that we get. So during the break, I did log into one of the VMs and run an app get. I can do that again for you. So what we're going to want to do is do copy this URL here, which is our untrust uh, public IP of the firewall. And we do SSH Palo Alto right here. And the web server listens on port 221, and the database server listens on port 222. So if we want to go to the web server, run 221, grab the P. And the username and password is the same that we use for the firewall. So we're in the web server. We can ping out to the internet. So this is traversing through the firewall. We wanted to ping east-west. We can ping, but we won't be able to SSH because we don't have a policy allowing SSH between the web and the database server. We're just allowing SQL traffic, and I'll show you that policy in just a minute. Um, so if we wanted to run an app, uh, sudo app get upgrade, just click yes. And if we go over to the firewall, go to the monitor tab, take a look at this traffic, we can see pings, we can see our my SSH that I used to get into the VM. If I click refresh, we should start seeing some of those app gets come in, and we can see them right here, application app get. So going back to the policies, this web to db it allows a source uh, from our web server to talk to our database server using just SQL, which is what we want. And on our Actions tab, we're using our content inspection. Um, right now, the way this is pre-configured is we're only using vulnerability protection. So right now we have a predefined profile called Test Drive. So if we go back to this, copy this URL, this will send us to our web server. And this template does have built into it a way to test that vulnerability protection profile. So all you have to do is append sql-attack.html. And you can launch one of these. So if we wanted to launch the brute force SQL root password guessing, We've just launched that. And if we go back to the firewall, go to our monitor logs, you can see that the SQL traffic, the SQL application is being used in our traffic logs. 
However, in our threat logs, we've detected that there's been some sort of brute authentication attempted using the SQL app application. And you can see that we've reset that connection. So this just demonstrates the ability that even though we can really do layer seven inspection on identifying this application, it's equally as important to inspect the content of the, those applications as well. So that concludes this demo. I'll go back and show you how to remove the environment. It's very simple if you made a new resource group. So if you go back to resource groups, you just click this, click this three dots, click delete resource group, type two tier demo RG, and click delete. And that concludes the video. Hope you guys found it a good use of time. Thank you.